Welcome to Rango. That follows along this mentally insane chameleon with an identity crisis who really wants to be an actor. He keeps acting with made up plays with the toys around him and he feels like he's in a box, which he actually is. He's in a box being transported across the desert by a family that's moving towns, I think. And then they take evasive action because this dipshit chose the worst time possible to pass the car ahead. Then they run over this thing in the road, which bumps the car up into the air, trampolining lizard dude out of the rear window of the station wagon. Who the fuck keeps that window open when you're transporting shit and you've got the trunk full to the brim? That's a disaster waiting to happen. Anyway, his tank enclosure thing gets bumped out of the car and shatters on the ground. He slides around a bit, miraculously unharmed, experiences the scorching hot sun of the desert and sees an armadillo calling him over to help him up because he got run over by a car. He's the thing that bumped the car up in the air. He was trying to cross the road to get to the other side and meet the spirit of the west. How is this motherfucking c still alive? He's almost split in half. It doesn't matter. Lizard dude tries to help him up, but then after a break in the traffic, cars come back and the draft of them coming by launches him up in the air, leading Bro to experience all manner of life threatening situations when he finally lands on the side of the road when the armadillo magically glues himself back and comes to talk to him, saying that the path to knowledge is fraught with consequence. I'm just looking for the path to water. So the wise armadillo tells him that the water comes every Wednesday in the nearby town of dirt. Lizard man is very excited to meet some new people or animals that are not toys. Armadillo tells him it's a day's journey that way straight into the desert. He just needs to follow his own shadow. There's a couple of problems with that statement. First off, the shadow is pointing into the right, so he's not actually following it. If he were to follow it, he'd go directly parallel to the road. And second, the shadows are inconsistent because when the armadillo got up and went over to talk to him and was towering over him, his shadow was pointing in the opposite direction. Who fuck with the light source in this scene? Irrelevant. After the dude leaves, Armadillo whispers, I'll see you on the other side, amigo. And while the dude walks out into the middle of the desert with a bunch of singing owls giving him a backing track and pseudo narrating his journey, owls in real life can't move their eyes the way they do in this movie, by the way. But then again, owls in real life can't talk or not animated either, so I don't know what my point here is. Anyway, he stumbles upon a frog, camouflages a rock, telling him to stop moving because there's a hawk in the sky and that sees movement and goes down to snatch it and kill it, and he's gonna kill him. Despite my dude's best efforts to blend in, he fucking sucks at it all, especially when he tries to change its color and camouflage right next to the fucking frog that I don't know if there are any frogs in the desert, but whatever. The attempt to change colors just attracts the hawk, and he also is wearing a bright red shirt, so it wouldn't have worked either way. The bird dives down to get him, and he runs for his life and accidentally gets an empty can of Chef Boy RD or some shit stuck on the hawk's head. Then he gets into an empty glass bottle, thinking he's safe because the hawk can get to him, but the hawk just lifts him up and drops him straight onto the frog's head. The frog gets mad, then reveals himself like an idiot, and gets himself caught inside of the gecko retard, who goes to sleep that night in a random pipe, has a crazy weird ass dream, then wakes up drowning because the pipe is having water getting dumped out of it into the middle of the desert. He wakes up, freaked out, and tries to drink any of the water before it dries out, but then ends up at the feet of beans, holding a gun to his face, thinking that he has something to do with the drought that her town is suffering because he just came out of that pipe. Her town is the same town that he's trying to get to, and after a while, she realizes that he's nothing but a simpleton retard who has nothing to do with this drought, and offers him a ride into town, which she regrets because he keeps talking and he's annoying as fuck. So she drops him at the edge of town instead of in it. He enters a small town of dirt, which is a wild westy place where there are all manner of creatures, from cockroaches to rabbits to foxes, that are all somehow the same size, and where water is not only used for drinking and crops and such, but it's also used as currency. And cause there's a drought that forces most of the farm owners and landowners to sell out their land. A predicament that Beans is facing with her farm, so she goes to withdraw some credit or whatever from the bank, and the bank manager, who's on the verge of a fucking mental collapse, can't help her out because there ain't no water, and he shows her the bank reserves. He shows her that there's basically none left, there's only six days of water remaining, which is something no one knows about. Obviously, as to not make anybody panic. Meanwhile, Retardo's trying to blend in. He goes into a saloon, asks for water, they all laugh at him, of course. Bartender tells him the only thing they got is cactus juice, so he slides him a bottle, and the townspeople are trying to suss out what the stranger is, where he comes from, who he is. He figures out that he can make up any bullshit story he wants and assume any character he wants, so he comes up with the character persona of a really badass cowboy Wild West dude from the West named Rango, and keeps playing it up with fake stories, and when they ask him if he's the one that killed these really famous seven people, he's like, yeah, I killed them all with one bullet, and he keeps making up a fake story about that shit as well. They all believe him because they're naive dumbasses, and that's how stories travel, word of mouth and that shit. Then the town rascals, vandals, thugs you might say, walk in, and their leader Bad Bill, who's like a fucking tiny dinosaur, approaches Rango and tries to intimidate him with a cigar while they all tell him about his stories. So Rango swallows the cigar to try and reverse intimidate him, takes a swig of cactus juice, which must be high in alcoholic properties because he burps out a fucking ball of fire into his face, prompting Bill to challenge Rango to a duel against him and his men, which is hell unfair, but I guess since they heard that he killed seven with one bullet, four will be child's play for him. So fake until naked dude tries to intimidate them while fumbling around, and because of that, he doesn't notice that the hawk from earlier lands right behind him and scares off Bill and his boys. Yeah, cause the hawk flies around and makes zero noise while flying and landing right behind him. Also, how did he not feel the whoosh of the air when he landed behind him? That's fucking stupid. But whatever. Now thinking that they ran off because of him, he keeps leaning into his character till he finally turns around and notices the hawk and runs into an outhouse. Then some dumbass beaver or some shit decides that this is a good moment to go and retrieve his hat from the middle of the road while all this fucking really dangerous shit is happening. Way to pick your moment, buddy. And that distracts the hawk long enough for Rango to make his escape and run away. So the hawk runs after him and dipshit Rango keeps running around in circles, which the townspeople would mistake for him running after the hawk, not the other way around, making them think that he's really brave. Then he ends up in a vending machine to hide. The hawk figures out how to get him out of there, so he gets out with licorice ropes and then it starts running away in the middle of the road. Hawk gets a hold of the licorice rope tied to him and he holds onto this tower of coal or dirt or whatever, pulls out the gun to shoot the hawk, but then points it at the licorice rope to cut it on time himself, shoots, and the bullet ricochets all over the place, fucking with the structure of the tower that he's holding on to, allowing it to slowly topple over, fall onto the hawk and kill it. Do you mean to say that a hawk who is smart enough to successfully operate a vending machine
locals. I say we cook that right up. Isn't that cannibalism? Kinda? Whatever. They send Rango over to the mayor and at the mayor's office, he finds beans bursting out of his office because she was told that he would help her in her time of need and the help he offers is buying the farm off of her and she refuses to do that. Gets pissed and leaves. Rango goes in to the mayor table who gives a little speech about how whoever controls the water controls everything. Pours some vintage rain water for himself and forgets to pour it for Rango to continue on and speak how old he is or whatever. So Rango tries to sneakily get some water into his cup but drops the thing. You don't have to sneak it, dude. It's almost expected of you to pour some for yourself. Also, the thing gets capped off between shots, although the mayor didn't cap it off. And how the fuck did the mayor not hear the glass shatter? Maybe because he's old, he has bad hearing, whatever. Mayor Turd gives Rango a sheriff's badge and makes him the sheriff to give the people some hope and something to believe in. Then after Rango leaves, we get a glimpse of Mayor Turd being evil with Bill and Beans is onto him because he's the only one not affected by the water. Also, there's water being dumped out in the desert. So the Bangu tells her if she really has a problem with it, she can now go take it up with a new sheriff. So he goes to Rango to take it up with him. He's still letting them all and getting dressed up in his new clothes. She tries to complain to him, then gets a freeze because she has mental issues, and this is a defense mechanism, then tells him something, something. The last sheriff got fucked and takes a bite from an apple. Then the clock strikes 12 on a Wednesday, which is when the water comes. So they all grab bottles and buckets and such to do a water dance, which is like a ritual they have every Wednesday. And walk over to a nearby faucet where Mayor Turd is, calls over dudes with a big ass spigot to attach it to the valve and turn the thing. Open the faucet and nothing comes out but a bunch of shit. And everybody goes nuts because there's no water. And Beans confronts the mayor and leaks the news about the very low reserves in the bank, which makes people panic even more. Hold on a second, if they have a Mad Max water dump every fucking week, why do they not have more efficient ways to collect this water? For fuck's sake, some of them come with fing bottles. The only thing worse than that is cupping your hand and collecting the water that way, or maybe a fucking syringe. Get a fucking human sized bucket, dipshits, or make one if you can't find one. Then maybe you wouldn't have this problem, retards. Anyway, they all pile into the bank to panic in there. Sheriff Rango calms down the commotion with display of force in his underwear. He sees the water and fucking cream himself and tries to make a very obvious point, saying that if it runs out, they're all gonna die of thirst. Fucking duh. He was just making up dumb shit to say as an excuse to drink some water. So he's gonna make protecting this water his top priority. That night, he gets dressed up in the finest strip and sees a couple of moles dig up into the middle of the road, saying, This ain't the bank. And dipshit <laughs> Rango doesn't hear this shit and thinks they're prospecting without a permit. So he gives them a permit, some tools, and when the blind Barbosa looking ass dad comes up, he goes as far as to tell them where the fucking bank is. And next day, the bank is obviously robbed. Rango forms a posse to fing find who robbed the bank and rides out with them only to come back immediately because he has no idea where the fuck they're going. So he makes a Native American crow his deputy, tells him to lick some dirt, piss in the wind, or use any of his Native American ways to find out where the thieves went. And he's like, it's not that deep, bro. They obviously tunneled in. So the dumbass forms a small group, including beans, and jumps down with them into the tunnels, lighting the way with long lasting matchsticks. They find a pipe down there and decide to follow it to see its origin, thinking that they'll find the robbers there. They pass by huge cave systems with a big ass harmless creature, get to the end of the tunnel and the pipe, and get out of there through a hole in the top to find a bunch of dead cactus trees. Also, the bank is dead there as well. He died via drowning, the doctor says. How the fuck can you tell that by putting your one barely functional shitty ear next to his chest? Isn't the only way you can find out if someone drowned or not is checking whether their lungs are filled with water by inspecting their lungs on the inside? Or am I wrong? I'm not a doctor, so I don't know. Whatever, he drowned in the middle of the desert with fresh muddy footprints around him. Rango botches a quick funeral for him and they keep following a prostate trail that the crow chief picked up. So they ride their chickens or whatever in that direction and did they hide these motherfucking bipedal feathery fucks in their pockets or some shit? Where the hell did they come from? Did they go back to the town and get them? Whatever, who cares? Some more tracking, riding, and a guitar solo later, they camp out somewhere in the middle of the desert and exchange stories about throwing up stuff, bodily fluids, and fecal matter. And then this fing rabbit is like, Pass your beans, beans. Sheriff? Uh, no thanks. Mr. Now wait a minute, how the fuck do you have conveniently sized apples, bananas, and all types of fruit that is exactly their size, but beans are human sized? Whatever. Rango the retard gets asked to tell them about the spirit of the West, so he recites the same stuff that Armadillo told him at the beginning of the movie. Then they all hold hands while Spoons prays to the spirit of the West and thanks him for sending them Rango in their time of need. And Rango starts feeling guilty about that because he's nothing but a lousy old cookie faker. Then Rango and Beans have a small talk about walking cactuses, love, and hope in the middle of the night. She freezes again mid conversation, so gives a peck on the cheek and goes off to bed and turns out to be a fake freeze. And next day, they spot the moles or digging rats space and the water jug being transported over to them. So they leave spoons on top of a hill to signal them something bad happens that they can't see and they get down there in record time before the son has enough time to tell his dad about something very important about the jug of water and distract them with the lesbian play. I don't know how they got the props to do all this shit but whatever. In the middle of the play they pull out their guns on them. Rango's like you and your whole family put your hands up. So the whole mole colony which is technically this guy's family rise up out of the ground like zombies to surround Rango and his men. And Spoon's like oh shit this must be something bad and start giving out signals signaling for his life in every way he knows how until he finally gets a heart attack and shoots his weapon which scares the little tiny pig pulling the cart and it goes hogwash running away with water. The posse hops onto the wagon, the chromosome colony dips down the ground and launches out of cave systems riding bats to attack the escaping posse from the air. Spoons drops his gun in disbelief and fear and rides his chicken away. Do not ever leave your weapon, that's the number one rule of being a soldier, dumbass. Anyway, the chromo colony is attacking from the air, Blind also orders them to do a Alabama squeeze box which sounds like an incestuous sex move, where two brothers are pounding and throw fucking their sister simultaneously from either side. Actually wouldn't be surprised if a definition already exists on Urban Dictionary. Anyway, a Yankee Doodle version of the Ride of the Valkyries plays, while the usual animated kids movie chase scene shenanigans happen, the Alabama squeeze box gets fought off, they try to bomb them unsuccessfully. Rango flies up into the air and has many Jack Sparrow moments, then gets eaten out by spoons, and as usual, nobody actually dies, although many should have. Except for this guy. Is that all you got? 
That guy's definitely dead. In the end, the wagon crashes, tipping over the water jug, revealing that there was no water in there, and the Komu thugs say that they did tunnel into the bank, but they didn't find anything in there. In fact, they found this empty water jug in the middle of the desert. But they don't care, and Rango's like, you and your kin are coming with me, and they ride into town, defeated and dejected, although they do have Blind Dosa and his two sons in custody as their prisoners to hang. They just don't have the water that they promised they were gonna bring back. How did the rest of the colony or family let them take them in? Didn't they literally just wage a whole fucking war against them? In fact, isn't that illegal in and of itself? Shouldn't they take them all in right now? Whatever, they're all ejected. Rango rides off to go talk to the mayor who's playing golf right now with Billy and the boys. And while Rango puts on golf shoes, he finds very suspicious looking muddy boots and explains his findings about Mayor Toto. Billy and his gang keep dismissing him and calling it all horse malarkey. Rango starts insinuating accusations of fraudulent, dubious activities by the mayor. And he's like, you said whoever controls the water controls everything. How on earth could I control the water? Then he tells him he's been here for a long time. He's really old. He's been here before the road split the valley and how he saw the march of progress through time and shit like that. And this old western shit's gonna die soon in favor for something bigger and better, more lucrative shit. Then lets him see a construction project he's working on and he tells him that he can either be a part of it or get left behind. Basically what he's trying to do is limit the water to the town, forcing everybody to sell out to him. And once he has all the rights of the land, he'll demolish everything and build casinos, hotels, and a bunch of retard shit on there so he can benefit off of the consumer society that'll be created from this or he's going to force into existence, whatever. Rango refuses to be a part of this unknown offer and leaves it so the turtle calls in Rattlesnake Jake to take care of him. A snake that wouldn't dare come out near the town because of the hawk that was always in the sky, but now that it's gone, he has no fear of coming out. And everybody's been warning Rango that he'd come now that the hawk is gone, but he kept lying to them, pretending that him and Jake were bros and he's immune to his bites because he kept putting some of his venom in his morning coffee. And so now the only person that hasn't sold the property off to the mayor is Beans. And Rango's really onto the turtle, thinking that he can control the water somehow. But then the townspeople get really mad and march onto the jailhouse, demanding for the moles to be hung and fucking killed in front of them because they're really mad and they have lost all hope. But Rango calms them all down. He's like, as long as that there sign hangs, you can believe in something. You can believe in me. It then immediately gets lit up by Rattlesnake Jake. He shows up calling Rango out on a lies he's spreading. Like, hello, brother. Thirsty. Putting some of his venom in a shot glass for him. Calling him out on more of the bullshit he said, like killing seven people with one bullet. I know rumors spread fast and all, and the seven guys one shot thing, that also sounds a lot like a sex thing, was told as soon as he came to town, so uh, probably had a lot of time to spread. But the story about him being his brother and drinking some of his venom every day in his coffee was told to a very small select group in the desert expedition he had, and they just came back today. It's not even been half a day. How the fuck did he find out about this information? Especially with no one wanting to talk to him because they're all piss shit scared, afraid to talk to him. Maybe he forced someone to talk to him and tell him stuff about Rango. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Tells him if he's really so badass, he'll pull out his gun and kill him right now, but he'll only need one bullet, right? So he takes out the rest of the bullets and gives him the gun with only one in the chamber. Rango pulls back the hammer, but Jake's like, no balls. No balls indeed, because he does not shoot him because he's a pussy, and we cut to a wide shot with their hammer down, although we never heard Rango put it back down. Lots of small inconsistencies in this movie. Anyway, Jake's like, you're nothing but a pathetic fraud, and tells him to admit his lies and to leave town and never come back. Uh, he doesn't kill him for some reason, which I think is weird because everybody was making him out to be a bloodthirsty kid. So, what's up with that? Anyway, Rango drops his badge and walks away into the desert. While the sunset, he walks across it in the middle of the night, real depresso espresso, until he gets back to the road and meets all his plastic toy friends. His identity crisis level is at an all time high, and he attempts to commit suicide by crossing the road without looking any side and walking real slow. And he miraculously makes it to the other side unharmed, then passes out and gets carried away by a bunch of bugs. Lots of parts of the Caribbean bits, bobs, and vibes in this film. I wonder why. Also, how did the wind from all the passing vehicles not launch him up into the air like in the beginning of the movie? Is it because he's way closer to the ground now? Doesn't matter. Rango wakes up in Davy Jones' locker with generic award winning white western actor number six, who he figures is the spirit of the West, who starts giving him wisdom and advice like, It's not about you, it's about them. It's the deeds that make the man. You have to go back. No man can walk out on his own story. Then he leaves and disappears into thin air, so he has like a vision or some shit. And the armadillo appears like, We all see what we need to see. Then shows him how this place used to be a lake bed, and they start seeing cacti or Spanish daggers, I believe, start to move. Rango remembers that Beans told him of a legend that they move towards water, so he follows them till they crest the hill and they see Cringetopia, Las Vegas, land of sin. Is that the actor in the golf cart? Was he a vision or was he not? Irrelevant, doesn't matter. There's a big ass water pipe nearby with a section coming out of it and a closed off shot off valve with very familiar boot prints around it. Obviously, the evil mayor was here and he took inspiration from Las Vegas to make his plan and shot off the water to the town. This is how he controls it. Something that Rango finally figures out and puts together through lots of flashbacks. And he decides to go back to the town and save it with a plan. And the plan is go back to Blind Diosa's colony slash family, telling them that he's gonna hang for something he didn't do, but they can help Fium by flying their bats in a hawk like formation to scare off Jake and sending another portion of the colony through the tunnels that they dug to dislodge a portion of the pipe. So when the clock strikes 12 and 1 minute, the armadillo gives the signal to the Spanish daggers who they some fucking how got to cooperate with them. How do you even communicate to them? Do they speak English? Doesn't matter. They're gonna open the shutoff valves and flood the town through the holes. Then he goes back to town, picks his badge back up, calls out Jake, who was choking Beans to death, trying to force her to sell her land off to the mayor, steps out to go tango with the Rango for another duel at Hanun. While approaching each other, he shoots the crow dude who's trying to help out and snakes over the mole hole just in time for one past twelve. The moles break the pipe and the armadillo gives the fucking signal. Water floods the cave and shoots out the holes, launching Jake into the sky, making more holes all over the fucking town. The bats come in in hawk formation and momentarily scare the crap out of Jake, who then notices that they're just a bunch of bats in a hawk formation and opens fire on them, emptying all the ammo out of his Gatling gun tail tip, leaving Jack Sparrow, I mean Rango, to point his gun with one in the chamber at him and be a real threat. Jake is in disbelief, but it's a short-lived victory because the mayor gets Rango's attention with beans all tied up and he tells him to hand over his gun. So he turns while taking the bullet out of it
but I think you just swallowed plan B. <laughs> I see what you did there, you dirty bastards. He starts doing the hammock on her while the mayor turns on Jake, pointing Rango's gun at him, telling him that he's a dying breed and they don't need outlaws and gunslingers in the area they're heading into. But obviously when he comes to shoot the gun, the gun is empty and the bullet gets heimlicked out of beans, ever so slowly inching towards the fucking glass, cracking it, which is absolutely the most donkey shit ever, but who cares? It frees them and drenches everybody in water. The mayor is helpless on his back and Rango leads him up to Jake to have his way with him and kill him, do whatever he wants to him. He tips his hat one legend to another because he respects him now that he saved him and the whole town with a singular bullet. The legend has become true and shit and snakes away with the mayor. Rango's a hero, he fucks Bean and the town becomes a beach town where water is no longer money, money is money now. And I hate to break it to everyone, but the abundance of water will probably not last long because the Vegas water authorities or whatnot will definitely notice this massive leak in their system and fix it and probably cut off that water supply for good. Anyway, Rango rides off into the sunset to do hero stuff and the movie ends. This movie gets 8 John claude Van Dams out of 72 Salsa Dancers.